Hey, it's Lana from Sage and Sound and today I wanted to talk to you about mindfulness of emotions. I absolutely love this technique and I think that it's something that very few people know how to do intuitively but once you learn how to do it, it can make a huge difference to your life. Um, so first off, let's talk about emotions in general and what we tend to do with them. So when feelings crop up, uh, mostly negative feelings because they're the ones we don't like, um, what a lot of people have the tendency to do is to push those feelings away. They think, I don't like it, I'm going to kind of pretend it's not there, I'm going to ignore it. Uh, sometimes this works because the feeling is little and goes away, um, but more likely what ends up happening is that it just kind of sits there waiting to be felt uh, and you can think about it like you know shoving clothes into the back of your cupboard. It works for a while, you don't have to deal with them, don't have to see them, but eventually one day you're going to open that cupboard to shove something else in and the whole thing's going to fall all over you. Um, when you, that happens, the, the emotions come out, they can feel really overwhelming and it sets up the idea that emotions really are something that you don't want to deal with. So you sort of shut the cupboard as quickly as possible and then go back to piling the, the clothes or the emotions in there. Uh, so we ignore them for too long and then they kind of explode all over us. Um, the other thing that people often do with emotions is that they grab hold too tightly to them. So a feeling comes in and our brain's natural response um, to I don't like this if it doesn't push it away is to think how can I solve this? Our brain is an awesome problem solving machine, it loves to do it and so its problem is I'm feeling sad, scared, whatever and it thinks hmm I wonder what I did with this last time. Maybe that'll be a solution to how to fix this. And so regardless of what caused the emotion, your brain starts looking for other times in your life where you've also experienced that emotion. So it goes back through your memories and finds other times when you've been sad. And thinking about those memories, because um, we're not great at telling the difference between reality and imagination, means that we invoke some more of those feelings. So we feel more sad than we did before. And that only ramps up the brain's problem solving mode where it's like oh gosh this is getting worse not better we're gonna try even harder to find the solution and it pulls in more and more sad moments and then it kind of generalizes out to other things that perhaps weren't sad but were otherwise negative and you kind of spiral around between these memories that make you feel worse and the feelings get more intense and that only encourages your brain to try and get the solution by thinking more about the memories and it spirals around and around and you end up with the same result result as if you'd shoved them down for ages in that they become completely overwhelming and what we learn is that feelings suck. We don't want to feel negative emotions. So that's what tends to happen one way or another unless you've been taught how to be mindful of emotions. Um, being mindful of emotions basically means sitting in the middle of those two extremes. So when a feeling comes in, we don't shove it away, but we also resist the urge to get up into our heads about the feeling. Um, so the feeling comes into our body and instead of going to memory, or even if you do, you just remind yourself to focus on the feeling and how it feels in your body. So you describe it to yourself um, and you can do this in a whole number of ways. I think the easiest thing to start with is just to label the emotion. I am feeling sad at the moment or angry or scared. The next simplest thing to do is to give it a rating out of 10 or out of 100. How intense is this feeling? And as we're going through this process, not only are we stopping our minds from getting caught up in memories, but we're also creating a bit of sense of distance from the emotion. So yes, it's there, but there's also a part of me that's describing it. And the part of me that's describing it can't be overwhelmed by it. Overwhelm means to be completely consumed by something. So we start with these basic ways to give us a bit of a sense of feeling like a bit in control, a bit separate from the feeling. And then you just work even further with those ideas. So you, you describe to yourself what is sad, like if, if you were describing this to an alien from another planet you can't see sadness that much, um, if we're crying maybe, if your shoulders are hunched forward maybe, but what does it feel like in your body? Where is your sadness? Is that a heart thing for you? Is it a stomach thing? Where do you feel that feeling the most? 
um, you can assign colors to it, weights, um, spiky, you know, like it looks like an alien. You can get as detailed as you want uh, and all the detail just helps you create a sense of being separate from it. Um, it contains the feeling uh, because as you're noticing, okay, well, this, this sadness in my heart is like a block, but it's not a block that covers my whole body. You know, my sadness block might be from my neck and it comes down to, you know, um, in the middle of myself and it's like a, a, a cylinder, you know, but these side parts of me, they don't feel the sadness as much. And if you are going through this process, you will find that not everywhere in your body feels an emotion with the same intensity. So you can put your attention on where you feel it most and that's the easiest thing to do. But then also once you've done that, you can focus on where it isn't in your body. So the tips about ears, um, backs, feet, depends on the emotion, depends on the person, but there will be parts in your body, elbows are a really good one, where you don't feel the emotion very much at all. And so they can become useful anchor points in terms of, again, this isn't going to overwhelm me. Yes, it's intense in this part of my body, but it's not intense in these other parts of my body. Um, and you just, you just kind of do that. You, you scan through your body, describing what you notice to yourself until the feeling changes from being something that I don't want this to I'm kind of just bored of this technique, like I've done it. So yeah, that pain in my heart is still there. Yeah, it's still a cylinder. Uh, I don't love it, but I've got nothing else to say about it. And when you get to that point, that's when you know that you felt the emotion. Um, it's, it's cleared it as much as you can clear it. And if you just get on with things, you won't um, go back into stuff with, you know, a pile of undealt with emotion waiting to explode later. And you won't have got caught in that cycle of adding to the feeling with our memories. Feelings are, are totally doable. Um, we can cope with a feeling, particularly if you're only coping with the feelings that are there in the present moment. What stuffs us up, um, regardless if it's, it's feelings or if we're thinking about things to do, is when our head gets involved and the fact that we can think about things so much more quickly than we could ever live through them. And so you can then build up a whole lot of stress, anxiety, sadness very, very quickly um, because it's not created from the lived experience. You're sort of artificially doing it with your head. So if we keep you away from that. Any feeling is, is totally bearable by using this technique. And what that means is next time you're not scared of feelings, you're less likely to um, shove them down and your brain's less likely to think it needs to solve the problem. It's like, oh yeah, I know what to do with this. We just describe it to ourselves and then it goes away, easy. Um, so that is mindfulness of emotions in a nutshell. Um, it only takes uh, a few minutes. You don't have to do it for a really long time. And once you practice in it, you can do it almost anywhere. And for a lot of people, not being afraid of their feelings, not feeling like they have to avoid certain parts of reality is an incredibly freeing experience. So I really urge you to give this technique a try next time you're feeling any kind of emotion that you don't like. You can do it with positive ones too, <laughs> um, if that's a safer place to start for you. Um, but give it a go and see what you think. Uh, it's certainly something that myself and a lot of my clients have had heaps of success with in terms of being able to move through life much more quickly, not being so afraid of different experiences, um, and so being able to experience much more joy and freedom in their life because they can work towards their goals without um, worrying about negative emotions that might come up when they do so. Thanks for watching. See ya.